Hi, welcome back to Crimson Glass on YouTube, and this is part one of Writing Broken Girl Book Two, my vlog series where we talk about uh, how I write, and um, I use you guys basically as a psychiatrist because writing is tough and it breaks your brain. So if you are not familiar with For the Broken Girl, book one came out, I started publishing it in May, and then in June I just dumped the last like 15 chapters because I knew if I, after I posted a specific chapter, you guys would be very angry with me for about four days. And after that, I just started like posting everything I write at the same time. So you get everything I write the day I publish it. So that's kind of Broken Girl started that. So that came out finally in June and it rewrote 2006, um, the Lucky and Elizabeth uh, marriage relationship on General Hospital, I rewrote that story from the point of view of Elizabeth because um, she's a better character. She's my favorite character. And I think that that particular story spent a lot of time blaming drugs for Lucky being a general shit ass. And I think if anything, in the last 14 years, what we have discovered is Lucky is, when not played by Greg Vaughn, the worst person in the world. And sometimes, sometimes, even when the beautiful Greg plays him, because like, he's really pretty. So like, I can avoid, like, you know, I can, you can, you can, when Greg Vaughn plays Lucky, you can like ignore the fact that he's a complete fuckboy. boy. But when he's Jonathan Jackson, he just cries all the time. You're like, oh really, he is the worst. Like, where is the boy that I fell in love with when I was 15? That's right, I'm a former Lucky stan. I'm a former Lucky and Elizabeth stan. So writing Broker Girl really hurt. <laughs> So uh, book one was uh, the dissolution of that marriage. Uh, Jason and Elizabeth have an emotional affair. Lucky gets on the drugs. Jason and uh, Sam break up. The Manny Ruiz stuff. Like it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. Um, I did not vlog that entire process. I only vlogged the uh, revisions. And in this first video, um, it's gonna be, sh I think it's gonna be short. We'll find out. I really just wanna set out my intentions because I actually haven't done anything yet. Uh, we are just like, where do I start? Uh, so I finished Fool Me Twice last night, my, my last draft. I finished that last night and I promised myself I'm not gonna write this, this whole winter break. From December 18th until G December 31st, I'm not gonna do anything creatively writing. So, but I also don't know how to like turn off my brain. I, I wanna plan, like I wanna, I, 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 planning is a lot more, it's a lot less pressure. I can toss 25 minutes of it here, maybe an hour of it here that day, but like writing is just a different energy. And that's what I'm gonna do. What do I, where am I gonna start with Broken Girl? It's a sequel. So it means I have to go back and really reread that first story. So um, that's actually the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna do that this weekend. I reread it a couple of months ago, um, maybe in August, I think, and then I haven't really looked at it since. I'm actually going to take it and put it into good notes and mark it up in the sense that like, oh, here is, um, I wanna make sure I, maybe I didn't hit this as well. Like, I just wanna go through it and like, make sure you hit this in the second book, a follow up on that, brainstorming as I go through the draft um, to do that. And then, so I'll do that this weekend. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Scrivener. I'm gonna give it a new folder and say, okay, why am I writing a sequel? To recap, at the end of Broken Girl book two, I don't know that we need a second book, honestly. Uh, other than the fact that like, ah, uh, there was Escobar stuff that we left, like the mob stuff was left up in the air. Uh, Sonny and Jason are a little bit cranky, but like Jason and Elizabeth are like not super together, but like they're together and Elizabeth is left lucky. Like that's, the narrative is done, right? I don't need a second book. The interesting thing is, is like the book I wrote for book one was never the plan. I was never gonna write that. I was never, I was always gonna start it at this point with Elizabeth having already pretty much like be at the end of their relationship with Lucky. And then the Jason and Elizabeth stuff would happen later. But the more I was thinking about Discovery, the more I was like, I could really, really play with this the liaison reconnection in 2006 and then break Jason and Sam up in an organically way that doesn't piss me off because I was actually a, okay. When I say I was a Jason and Sam fan in 2006, I mean that I had like gotten on board with the fact that I was never going to have Jason and Elizabeth again. And up until about February of 2006, I was on board with Lucky and Elizabeth because Greg Vaughn's version of Lucky was actually a pretty good one. And I thought that they like Greg and, Greg and Becky had amazing chemistry. So like, I was okay with the couples I had in 2006. And then, you know, we got the connection. And I thought, how could I have ever given this up? When I, and, but like the fact that they broke Jason and Sam up because of danger, like the fact that they're still in the year of our Lord 2020 breaking Jason Sam up for fucking danger. I'm just like, what are you doing? Why, why are we still having this conversation? Oh my God, if I were an actual fan of this couple, I think I would just throw myself off a cliff. It's very frustrating. Like how can you still, uh, Jason has not allowed them to grow as a character since 2008 and I am not here for it anymore. Where was I? What I actually had a thought of is I remember a scene in 2006 in September Lucky and Eliz Elizabeth had already slept with Jason. She already knew she was pregnant, but she was not hadn't had the paternity test yet. And Lucky had promised he was off the drugs. 
And then Elizabeth found drugs and she tried to leave him and he shook her and she ended up falling to the floor. Don't make this any harder than it has to be. Put the bag down. Okay, I don't want to talk. I, I just, I just want to... You're not going anywhere. Do you give me a chance to explain? And it was that moment, as a Lucky and Elizabeth fan, I said, okay, I am done with this couple because he just physically abused her. And like, we blamed the drugs. And Elizabeth never got to like come into terms with the fact that she had been that whole summer emotionally abused, but because of the vicious things he was saying about her, the rumors he spread about her sleeping with Patrick, she might as well have slept with Patrick for all the shit she took for it. But then he physically abused her and just like, we let it go. And like, this is supposed to be the great love of her life. Fuck out of here. And after that, I just kind of like, I got almost obsessed with the idea of, not then, but like now when I was going back and rewatching old liaison scenes, I got obsessed with the idea of what if we let Elizabeth have that storyline? I mean, the problem with my stories is it tends to feel like I traumatize Elizabeth. And all I'm doing is actually following the breadcrumbs the story this show has given us. They have already have her been sexually assaulted by Rick when he drugged her and slept with her. I just followed the breadcrumbs. I let Elizabeth have that trauma and just have it happen to her and then erase it. Lucky physically abused Elizabeth. He emotionally abused her. I just let us deal with it. So I spent a lot of my time unpacking the stuff that General Hospital sets up and then doesn't really follow through with. And then this is story is where I thought I really wanted to do that. And so I think there's more to be told with Elizabeth unpacking what she's been through. And I also think it's important to see the recovery. I think it's important. I want to write that because Broken Girl, last, particularly, I wrote that first draft in February and March of last year before the world fell apart. But then I was revising it and going in and really dealing. I was living with that story in March, April, and May when the world around me in Mar I live in New Jersey, my schools closed down and I was alone for like three full weeks. I didn't have my students, I didn't have my family. And I was, I was editing a story about emotional and physical abuse. <sighs> it was a lot. And then I went right into Mad World, which I'll talk about, you know, you, you guys know, was also not, you know, kittens and unicorns. I need to write Elizabeth not only recovering, but triumphing over it. And I need to have her get some sort of justice. I need to have closure. I need to write that as a, as a person who wrote the first book. I need to write the second book. So that's what why I'm writing it. So that's why you have a sequel to book one. I would like to follow up on Elizabeth's journey. I want her to not only deal with what she's been through but to triumph over it and to win and i want us i want it to be a victory and i really and i think in 2020 and 2021 we're gonna need to see a lot of victories and i want to see elizabeth have it on the page so my plan is i'm gonna reread my first my first book brainstorm and sit down for 25 minutes here and there over the next week and just start to plan out okay what does victory look like what do i need to have happen and then also like what were the who were the characters in the first book what are some things i want to follow up on like just kind of like start to set out brainstorming like what are the things that need to happen and then next week i'll check in with you guys let you know where that went um probably not i don't know next week actually next friday is uh, christmas so probably not because bridgerton's coming out and i'm watching bridgerton so maybe on christmas eve i'll toss something up since um i don't have anything else to do all right so that is the plan we are kicking off broken girl i am very excited i can't wait to see what you guys think all right bye